Praise the Lord, church. Let's stand and give him glory tonight. Come on, he deserves more than that. Someone lift up a shout of praise unto God tonight. Lord, have your way tonight. Worship with us.
give him some praise tonight, hallelujah. He's worthy of all glory and honor, hallelujah, Jesus. I'm glad to know that if I need healing, I can call on the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, if there's a stronghold in my life, I just call on the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, I'm just thankful tonight to know that he is my Savior, he is my helper, he is my everything I need. Lord, we just praise and we magnify your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to take our offerings tonight, our tithes and offerings, and just believe that God's going to continue to bless the way he has. It is amazing to see the things that he is doing around here. We're in the short rows. I'm country, y'all. We're in the short rows. We're about to be in that new, that new sanctuary. There were times where I began to wonder if it would even happen. I, I'll admit, I got, I, I got little faith sometimes. But God is faithful, and we're getting there. And through the faithfulness of his people, we're going to be there. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to take up those tithes and offerings tonight. Lord, we thank you, God, for your blessings. Lord, we thank you for what you have given, dear Lord, and the opportunity to give back to the kingdom. So, Lord, I ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings tonight, dear God. Lord, for your glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. We have a few announcements before we go back into worship. It, it was said this morning, and it is true, Connect Groups, they have been off to a tremendous start this year. That was just a semester. It is, it is amazing. We had our book group yesterday, and it's amazing to see how God can work in just, you know, just getting together and having coffee. A brand, a, a new baby in Christ, and it was an opportunity to just to pour into it and see the light bulb come on. That's what it's about. We want to see the, the body edified, but we want to see those new people really get plugged in. And that's what it's about. If you're not part of a, a connect group, it's not too late. You can go to the website and, and find the link there to be able to go on, or you can talk to Sister Nancy and, or talk to any leader, and we'll, we'll point you in the right direction. We want to make sure everybody gets connected. Amen. Uh, for those of you who were part of Saturday prayer yesterday, thank you. Thank you. We are feeling the, the benefits uh, of what you did yesterday, of the willingness to pour into the kingdom, and we're seeing those benefits today. And that God, God is faithful. He will bless if we put in our work. He's not going to do what we're supposed to do, but he will do what he said he will do. So we want to keep that going. Remember, it's four-hour blocks. We don't expect you to be here for four hours. If you're spiritual enough to pray for four hours, you go right ahead. But I, I'm, I'm kind of like the disciples. Can you not pray an hour? <laughs> Sometimes I can't. But those four-hour blocks, 8 to four, or eight to 12, 12 to 4, 4 to 8. We want to see, please, let's just keep this going. Next weekend, our marriage retreat. We've been looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's time. I'm looking forward to it. If you're not part of that, I ask a favor of you. Pray for those of us who are. I, I believe that God is going to strengthen this church through events like this. You know, it, it's, it is amazing to see someone come to these altars and get saved. It is the miracle of the moment. But discipleship is the work of a lifetime. And things like this is part of that. We get grown closer to God. We get grown closer to each other. And that's, that's, a, that's what it's all about. Amen. So if, if those of you who are going, you should have received an email uh, with some information on that. If you haven't, let us know. We want to make sure you get that information as far as like times, place, um, all those type of things. Um, and for those who aren't going, don't worry. You're not going to miss out. The sergeants are going to be with us next weekend. Um, just amazing, amazing testimony, amazing um, preacher, uh, amazing man. I met him at NAYC last year and got to spend about 30 minutes with him. And he's like, oh yeah, you're from, you're, you're from Ryan's church. I was like, yes sir, I am. <laughs> and you know, just I'm looking forward to it. I believe that it's going to be at a great time in the Lord. And then finally, there's one other thing. In two weeks, campus cleanup. There's a lot to be done around here. And if we all come together, it won't take us long. If there's just a few hands that show up, it's gonna take those who show up a lot, a long time and a lot of work. But if we put a lot of hands to it, we can knock it out quickly. I believe that God wants us to take care of the things that he's given us, including this sanctuary, this building, this campus. Amen. So let's show up on the ninth to clean it up. 
Stand with us tonight as we go back into a time of, of praise and worship and give God the glory that he alone is worthy of. Amen. Lord, we praise and magnify you, Jesus, for you are worthy. Hallelujah. There's a sweet presence of God in this place tonight. Lift up a praise to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Continue to worship with us.
to be lifted high. All I want is for you, you to be glorified. Jesus, be glorified, God. We give you the glory. Fill our lives tonight, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Could we praise him tonight and give him glory? That God, you've been good to us. Come on, you're a good, good father tonight, Lord. We worship and adore you, God. We praise your holy name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you just lift up a hand towards heaven tonight? And would you just call upon that master right now that, God, there's nobody like you and none beside you, Lord, none greater than you, God. That, God, you've been faithful all the days of my life. That even during the difficult seasons, even during the moments where I didn't know where you were, you were still faithful to me, God. And so, Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to remind somebody right here, right now, that you're doing better than you think you are. I don't know who needs to hear it, but you're doing better than you think you are. Jesus, he had defeated death and went to his disciples, and they didn't believe that he was there with them. They, they, they just, they needed proof if you really are Jesus, if you really are the one that's defeated death, I want to see the holes in your hand. Thomas didn't want to believe it until he saw the proof. And Jesus said, all right, Thomas, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you. But blessed are they that have not seen, yet still believe. And let me encourage you. This is a body of Christ that here we are thousands of years later. And you have not seen the holes in his hand. You have not seen him audibly speak. You have not seen him physically walk on this earth. But yet you have the faith tonight to believe that he rose from the dead. He defeated. Come on, he did it all. And he ascended into heaven. Come on, you've got faith tonight. You're doing greater and you're doing better than you think you are this evening. I don't know who it is that maybe needs to hear that. That maybe you have lacked the faith. Look. Lacking faith is not anything new. That even the disciples lacked faith. That they had seasons where they thought, man, I just don't know how this is going to happen. And I don't know if I can trust this guy. And so if you've had seasons, come on somebody. If you've had seasons where, man, I just don't know how this is going to turn out. I've come to let you know you're not alone tonight. You're not alone. But I want to encourage you, and I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you right here, right now. I want us to pray a prayer that says, God, give me faith tonight. Give me faith to know that you can do the miraculous. Come on, all across this house, would you lift up a hand and pray a prayer that says, God, give me faith. Give me faith to believe that, God, you can move the mountains. God, give me faith to know that nothing is impossible. God, give me faith to know that you are who you say you are. God, give me faith that when I read the word of the Lord, I can trust in it. I can hope in it. I can rest in it. God, give your church. Give us faith, Lord. God, give us faith. God, give us faith. I'm praying this prayer for myself. God, give me faith. You want to know why? It's because I hear the Lord speak things to me like, get ready. And then between get ready and, and the time where we've got to be ready because God does it, there are seasons where I start to get a little worried and think, man, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get this accomplished? Is it all right that I just be a little real tonight? How, how are we going to see this come to fruition? How is this? How are we going to accomplish that? And how can we fix this? And how can we make that better? And, and how can we, come on, there, there's a little humanity, a little flesh that begins to question, how is it all going to happen? But God, give me faith that when you are going to make the increase happen, I just trust in you. I put my faith in you. I put my hope in you. And so God, give us faith. That Lord, you know what you're doing. That God, you are the great I am. That Lord, nothing is too great for you. And the church said, amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Amen, amen. Turn with me to the 
word of the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. Thank you, worship team and singers, for leading us into this moment right here, right now, where we can receive from the word of the Lord. Jeremiah 18 and 18. And if you don't get to it, it's all right. You can read it on the screen. Just kidding. It's not working for us tonight. And I just so happen to have a gob of scriptures. So hopefully you can uh, get out those old sword, uh, uh, sword drill skills and, and follow along with me this evening. And Jeremiah 18 and 18. If you've got it, would you say amen? Amen. It says, Then said they, Come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from priests, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. And watch this. Come and let us smite him with the tongue. Let us not give heed to any of his Works. These were the people rising up against Jeremiah that they wanted to smite him with the, somebody help me, with the tongue. They wanted to smite him with the tongue. Another portion of scripture, Psalm 40, my favorite portion of scripture, Psalm 40 verses 1 through 3, it says this, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock, establish my goings. In Jeremiah 18, the weapon that they used, it was their, their tongue. But look what happens when God pulled David out of the pit. In verse 3, and it says, He hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God, and many shall see it, through the fear shall trust in the Lord. I want to minister tonight, teeth a little tight, on a new song, a new song in my mouth, a new song in my mouth. Let's pray. Let's ask God to give us ears to hear and a heart to receive tonight. Lord, we love and we thank you, God. Speak to us, Lord Jesus. Lord, minister to us, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, let this word, let it be something that moves us, changes us, tricks us, Lord. I, I pray tonight as we hear your word, let there be a receptiveness and openness, Lord, to whatever it is that you have for us, God. I pray, Lord, let your word, let it convict, Lord, let it minister, Lord Jesus. Have your way this evening in Jesus' mighty name and all of God's people said amen. And before you're seated, would you find somebody around you? Just let them know it's so good to see them in God's house tonight. Would you find somebody and let them know that, man, that chili was good today. That dessert was good. That soup was good. And you may be seated in the name of the Lord. It's to Jeremiah 18, that God was speaking with Jeremiah about how he was, uh, how the Lord was the potter, and that God's people are the clay, and how many recognize that tonight, uh, that, that we, we must be willing to allow the Lord to make us and to mold us into whatever he wants to do. And literally, the metaphor is that we are the clay and, and that he is the one that, that works us into whatever it may be. And sometimes it feels like the room is spinning. Come on, somebody. It feels like we're going around and around 3,000 times per minute. And that, that's kind of how that works. That's how that clay gets, gets worked out. But, but that, is what, that is what God is speaking to Jeremiah about in Jeremiah chapter 18. That, uh, that he is the potter and that the people are the clay. And if they reject him, he can reshape them or rework them or he can throw them off that potter's wheel if he wants to. That he was showing, God was showing toward Jeremiah his sovereignty and his power over the people because they were not, um, they were not little, good little saints of God during this period. They were, they were throwing up some uh, real red flags. They were uh, presenting uh, uh, problems left and right. And, and God begins to warn Judah. And God begins to kind of uh, throw out the fact that he will reject them if they continue to reject him. That there would be judgment on them because of their rebellion, uh, rebellion and, and idolatry and lack of desire for the Lord. And, and here is just a little glimpse of how ugly and off these individuals were. Is that they, um, they did not like Jeremiah the prophet. 
they plotted against Jeremiah and they started saying things like this. Come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah for the law shall not perish from priests nor counsel from the wise nor the word from the prophet. They were saying there's other people we can listen to. Isn't that the case in 2024? You don't like the preacher, you can go and find somebody else, can't you? We're living in a day and age where, man, if you if you are looking for a flat earth, Trinitarian uh, 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 preacher that believes in um, uh, uh, dinosaurs and that they're out in uh, you know Europe right now, you could probably go on YouTube and find that exact preacher that's preaching that exact message that you're looking for. You can find what you're looking for on the World Wide Web. And here they were. They were saying, we can find a priest. We can find somebody else other than Jeremiah. We, we can find some wisdom from somebody else. And we can find a prophet that will give us words that, that we desire rather than the judgment that this, this guy's speaking. We, we can get rid of Jeremiah. But how are we going to get rid of him? And they tell you right here, come and let us smite him with what? Woo. With the tongue. These are the folks that God called Jeremiah to love and to reach and to minister to. And y'all thought you had it bad. You know, sometimes we can think, man, I don't know why I'm here having to teach this class or this Sunday school class. And, and he, here's Jeremiah. He's got people that don't even want to hear what he says. But not only that, they want to devise a plan to smite him and they want to use their tongue. We see this not just with Jeremiah, but we see it with people like Jonah, too, that he didn't want to go to Nineveh, and I don't blame him because the Lord had called him to minister to terrorists. These were evil people, rebellious people, sick people, but this is how amazing God's love and mercy and grace is, and that is that he desires that they be saved, too. Isn't it amazing that even those that we think, man, I don't know how they could be, God says, no, 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 I want them to be saved too. I want them to hear about the love of God too. I want my mercy extended to them too. Come on, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. It doesn't matter if you're evil. It doesn't matter if you're rebellious. It doesn't matter if you're sick. It doesn't matter if you come from Jeremiah 18 or from Jonah chapter 1. God is trying to let you and I know that all people can have access to the blood that was shed at the cross that he died for all sins that that's the kind of God that we serve and here is Jeremiah that God has called him to minister to people that are devising plans against him and so Jeremiah he's said fast in the face of opposition he's reliant on God's protection and power and might and I just want to encourage somebody that when you feel weak that's right when God can do his greatest work. When you feel like you've got nothing left to offer, that is right when the miraculous can take place and God can come in and do what only he can do. That is in our weakness that we find out, my goodness, he is strong and he is mighty and he is just and he is lovely. That there are some things that only come to fruition when we recognize that we can only do so much. That I am capped out and so now God, I need your strength. And here's Jeremiah the prophet. He's been preaching and teaching and doing all that he can. And all of a sudden, they come up with this idea that, hey, there's, there's other priests that we can listen to. There's, there's other words of wisdom that we can take in. There's other prophets that we can turn to. So let's smite this guy. We don't like what he has to say. He doesn't really bring the heat week after week, and so let's smite him, and, and here's how they came against him. They came against him with the tongue. Somebody say the tongue. This is what caught my attention in Jeremiah 18, is that of all the weapons they wanted to use, they wanted to use the tongue. That out of all of the attacks and ways to ruin someone, they said, we'll smite him with the tongue. That the word warns us in Psalm 140 and 3, it says, they make their tongues as a sharp as sharp as a serpent's and the poison of vipers is on their lips. It's like David was saying, I have felt the sting and I have dealt with the poison come in the form of words. It was in the late 1800s that nearly the whole city of Chicago was burned to ground. This, this entire city was going up in smoke and it was all because a cow came over a lantern left a stall inside one small barn on a farm. 
and it brought the whole, almost the whole city down because of one cow and one lantern, one little thing that can bring the whole city down. It got me thinking that you may not think that the tongue is that powerful, but life and death are in it. There is power to do evil, and there is power to do good in this little thing right here. That there's a warning from Jeremiah 18 that, man, all of the weapons that they could use to bring him down, they were going to use the power of the tongue. That it can bring the whole city down because there is power in our words. There is power in the tongue. And I'm telling you tonight, you may not think that the lie is that big of a deal. It may not seem like the backbiting or the bickering or the deceiving or the gossiping is that big of a deal. It may seem as though these are just minor, small conversations that won't add up to anything. But I've got to let somebody know they can burn the whole city down. It's wild how important and how big of a deal this is. I've got a little bit of an embarrassing story to share with you. Is it okay if I be a little transparent with you tonight? I'm close to losing my front tooth. Yeah, I know. I thought this would be awkward. You guys are, uh, uh, I hope this is a safe place. Come in here and your pastor's got one front tooth missing. What's going on? Well, the deal is, is I was playing basketball about 12 years ago, Brother Alex. And uh, this guy went down to pick up the ball, and I also wanted the ball. And he came up real hard, and my head was right behind his head, and I took a good bite out of the back of his head. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We went to the um, emergency room that night, and they pushed it forward, and they said, we're going to eventually have to pull this thing. And, uh, and so we'll get you a nice implant, and we'll put, you know, we'll drill it in there. And uh, I feel like maybe I should have kept this one to myself uh, <laughs> as I'm kind of sharing this all. <clears throat> And so there was a kind of a running joke on our youth committee when I would preach out. Um, they, they would always, because I, I, I told them this, I told them, I said, hey, guys, if I, if I start to preach like this, y- y- you'll know that uh, I've, I've probably, I've got a nice size gap, uh, you know, up front here. And uh, they got this little running joke going, asking me if, it, if it's rattling tonight, you know, because it would start to rattle when I get preaching. And I've started to notice here lately, maybe about a year ago, it, it was rattling. And so I went to the doctor, and, and he said, Man, we need to pull this thing. And I said, well, let's just hang on just, just a little bit longer. I've done good for about 10 years here. You know, I've, I've learned how to eat properly on the side, of, or I guess improperly on the side. And, um, and, uh, and so he was going to do it. I was ready to get this thing pulled. And he said, here's the only thing is that you can't talk for about three months. And I was like, uh, can't talk for about three months. That's like the only thing I do. You know, it's like, you know, like literally my job, I, I don't do anything else. I just talk. Like I can't take, I can't take a, a, a Sunday off. And they were like, well, you, you're going to have to lay low because uh, it needs to heal. And then we're going to put the implant in. And, and I, you know, I just kind of reminded him like, hey, I'm going to have to push this thing off because uh, I, I've got some talking to do. And, and it, it's just a reminder tonight that there's power in this right here. There is power in our mouth. There is power in our words to do good and to do evil. And since it has that much power, David the psalmist, he tells us to guard it or to brittle it. Psalm 34 and 13 says this. It says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile or deceit. Would somebody say amen? I feel like from here on forward, you guys are going to be watching real close to see if you see something. You see, we see it in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. It says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his, keepeth his soul from troubles. That the Bible even goes on to say something uh, uh, along these lines in Proverbs 17 and 28. It, it goes along these lines of saying, Just keep your mouth shut. It says this, Even a fool when he holdeth his peace is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man. Of understanding. I saw some of you jabbing your neck there. The, the proverb is letting you and I know that sometimes the best thing that we can do is just keep our mouths shut. And if we just let it loose, well, we've, we've heard it before that loose lips, they, they sink ships. 
And the irony is that we talked about staying in the boat today. But the one thing that we can do to bring that whole thing down, the one way to quench and slow down the revival, and the one way to make this a place where people want to run from rather than run to, is if we allow the tongue to become a fire. Come on, I'm telling you tonight, we want this to be a place where people run to, but if we've got individuals with loose tongues and are setting fires left and right, it'll become a place that they want to come to last. Because, oh, I know they're going to talk about me. I, I know what they're going to say about me. I'm telling you, if you want to quench it, if you want people to run away from this place, go ahead and let loose lips to control. Let that fire rise up with with loose lips that, that the Bible's trying to let you and I know that even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his mouth is esteemed a man of, of understanding. That, that the one way to make this a place where people want to run from rather than run to is if we allow that tongue to become like a fire. But James chapter 3 and verse 6. James chapter 3 and verse 6 says this. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, and so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. That is the power of the tongue is that it can defile the whole body and it can set off a great big fire. All started with this right here, meaning beware of unguarded talk. Because loose lips can burn it all down. And let me just address the digital tongue tonight. We've got loose lips, and nowadays we have loose typing. I've noticed that for some, the very first thing when they experience pain is that instead of running to the Lord, we run to the keyboard. I have noticed in my short time of being on this earth, and living in a day and age where we can go and communicate to the whole world, I've learned that for some people, instead of running to God Almighty when we are at our lowest, and instead of falling on our knees when we feel like we need help, for some unfortunate reason, I have recognized that there are individuals that will run to Facebook instead, that will run to Twitter instead, that will run to Instagram instead, that if I can just get a few people to agree with with the fire that I'm about to put and spew all across the internet, then maybe it'll help me feel better. That if I can just get a few likes and a few people that will agree with my negative commentary, then it might just feel better. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We're talking about loose lips. But in 2024, it's loose typing that we must be really conscious of. That the social media post that is passive aggressive and, and calls out everything and everyone that you want to hit on, it, it's not okay. It's not okay that if you have a disagreement with someone, you would never, here's the deal, Brother Jonathan, if you did something and I didn't like it, Man, I, I just don't like that tie you're wearing tonight, which is not the case. I'd love to take this. That's a beautiful tie, man. Man, I just feel like, you know, I just something was off tonight. And, you know, I, the, the last thing that we would do is go get a PA system and a microphone and some speakers and go down on the main drag in the middle of town and set that up and turn it on blast and tell uh, all of my frustrations about my brother in Christ to the whole city because here's the deal, none of them care about it anyways. And as they're walking by and going to the restaurant and going to wherever it is that they're going, they're kind of looking at you like, what's wrong with this guy? He's so frustrated and he's so loud and that's so aggressive and why wouldn't he just go talk to the individual that he has ought against? And it really looks awkward and seems abnormal when we put it in those types of, uh, of examples. But really what we do when we go to social media is much worse. 
it, 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 is, it is going to the digital town square, and it's going to the digital marketplace, and it's hitting many more eyeballs when you go on there and you say, man, there was a guy in church today. Well, we all know who you're talking about. And then uh, I just didn't like the way, blah, 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 exclamation point, and then press post, and then uh, uh, who cares? Who cares? The reason you're posting it is so that you can get two or three or four people to agree with you. And let me just address something. When the spirits left the house, it went and found more spirits so that it would go back into the original house. And it's because they know they're weak. And so when I leave this home, I've got to find more. I, will you agree with me? Because I don't like what they're doing. And so there is something spiritual here. That when we find something that's off, we want to go and find three or four or five more people that will agree with us. Because that will give us, that will give us the power to go and really kind of make ourselves feel good. I come against that in the name of Jesus Christ. If I've got ought against you, this is Bible 101. If I've got something that I have against you, what's the Bible says? The book of Matthew says I ought to go to you and work this out man to man. But the issue is that people are way too nervous to sit here and to really have a conversation. I'm encouraging the people of God to be strong in the Lord that I'm not afraid if I've got aught against my brother. The last thing I'm going to do is go blast them to the rest of the world. But I, since I love them and since I care about them and since you are my brother, are we okay right now? Everybody okay? Since you are my brother in Christ, hey, we need to sit down and talk because this matters and I love you. And so let's work through this because that is the way that the word of God tells us to do it. Doesn't stop there. Says if the person that you're coming to doesn't agree with you or doesn't want to listen or doesn't want to have a civil conversation, you bring a couple people with you. Doesn't it? If that doesn't work, you bring it to the church. And so there are right ways of doing this. And there are wrong ways of doing this. I am asking for the Pentecostals of Greenville to rise up above what the rest of the world does and recognize that we are children of the Most High God and that you are my brother and you are my sister. And so I, there are some things that we do differently. I am guarding my tongue. I am brittling my tongue. There are some things I'm not going to speak against you because we're in this together. You know what? We're going to be in heaven together. So we might as well go ahead and work it out here on earth. We're going to be standing at the feet of Jesus one day, worshiping and praising and glorifying God. You might as well work it out now because we're going to be together a long, long time. And, and you might as well go ahead and just address those things right here and right now because we're going to be doing this thing for a long, long time. But there is life and there is death in the tongue. And so your text messages matter. Man, it's quiet tonight, and that's okay. Your social media posts, they matter. Your words matter. I, I, sometimes I feel like creating an app where um, in order for it to post, it has to go to a small committee, and they have to approve it before it goes live. It's the day and age that we're living in. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, let it be acceptable unto you, O oh God. Come on, let the, come on, let the post, let the words, let the text, let it be acceptable. That these words, the tongue, it can be used for evil, but hear me tonight, it can also be used for good. That Psalm 40 said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of a pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet on a rock, and he established my goings. And the Bible says he put a new song of praise in my mouth. 
that that's what God does, is that when he pulls you out of the sin and the mess of this world, he brings you out of that and he puts a new word on your lips. He puts a new message on your mouth. He, he, he puts something new on, on your tongue, that, 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 uh, meaning I, I used to sing some songs, but, but he's put a new song in my mouth. That, that when he pulled me out of the pit, he put new vocabulary on my lips. That He turned my mourning into dancing, and he turned my negativity into positivity. He, he turned my verbal frustrations into a song of thanksgiving, and here's how this works. Because when you and I are saved, God does something beautiful. Turn with me to Ezekiel 36 and 26. When you and I are pulled out of the pit, God does something beautiful. Ezekiel 36 and 26. When he pulls you out of the miry clay and he pulls you out of the pit and he sets your feet on a rock and he establishes your goings, when he fills you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and when you're baptized in the name of Jesus, and you turn from your sin, I want to encourage everybody of Ezekiel 36 and 26, and it says this, he puts a new heart, Woo. a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and, and I will give you a heart of flesh that, that there's a new heart in there when God does something in your life. That, that when you are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and set free from the weight and the bondage of this world, he puts a new heart within you and I. Why is that so important? Why is that such a big deal? And it's a big deal because out of the abundance of the heart, somebody hear me tonight. Hmm. That out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That the tongue and the mouth is simply speaking what has been filled up in your heart. And so uh, please hear me tonight. If you are gossiping, there may be a heart issue. If you are always negative, if you are always finding what is wrong, if you are always looking at what didn't go right, there may be a heart issue. If you are always lying, always cheating, always deceiving, there may be a heart issue. But when God saves you, he purifies you. He puts a new heart in you that... That now, because I've got a new heart, I'm going to begin to speak on the good things of God. Uh, now that I've got a new heart, I'm, I'm going to be able to, to go ahead and put a new song on my lips. That, that now, because, I've got a, because of what God has done in my life, there are some things that I'm just not going to say. There are some, there are some things that I'm not going to address. There are some negative, ne negative thoughts that I'm just not going to let them come out because God has put a new heart within me and if you've been in this a long time and, and you think back to those early days of oh I, I remember when I first got saved I was so thankful and so joyful and, and so cheerful maybe you're here tonight and you're thinking but that was a long time ago don't blame it on time don't, don't blame the fact that you're no longer thankful or joyful or cheerful. Don't blame it on time. It's a heart issue, church. What we need to do in seasons where maybe we can find ourselves falling into the negativity and, and following uh, after the, the, the words of this world and, and following after things that just, man, that just doesn't sound like an apostolic. That just doesn't seem like, like the words that should be coming out of somebody that's been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. If that's where we are, we need to do what David did that Psalm 51 and 10 says, Create in me, Lord, clean heart. 
renew a right spirit within me and cast me not away from thy presence and and take not the Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. What David was saying is that God restore that joy that maybe I haven't felt in years. Restore it. That God, maybe there was something you did in my life 25 years ago and I've just been going through the motions and I've let loose lips get the best to me, but Lord, search me, God, and restore the joy in my life that I don't know about you, but let there be a prayer on the tip of my tongue that says, God, restore the joy in my life. Restore the peace in my life. Rejoy the... Stand with me tonight. I'm asking us this evening to pray a prayer that says, God, create in me a clean heart. Whether I've been in this for one week or 20 years, I I pray let there be an individual that says, create in me a clean heart. Why? Because there is power, there is life and death in the tongue. And I don't know about you, but I want to use it to edify. I want to I want to I want to use it to praise him. I want to use it to worship him. I want to use it so that I can help others make it to heaven. Come on, you and I, we ought to begin to use our mouth so that we can let this world know about the great I am. That David said, search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way after, the way everlasting. That God search my heart. That Lord, I I want my heart to be pure. That God, I, I, I want you to create in me, Lord, a clean heart tonight. Lord, I want you to renew in me, Lord, a right spirit. Would you lift up a hand towards heaven this evening? Would you lift up your voice all across the house tonight? Hallelujah, Jesus. There's a weapon that we can use to destroy, or there's a weapon we can use to win this world. There's a, there, come on, there's something that we can use in this last day to help encourage and lift up, or, or we can use it to tear down. But I pray, let there be somebody tonight that says, God, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me that, God, I pray, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Come on, is there anybody here tonight that would make their way down to an altar and say, God, I pray it in the name of Jesus, search me, oh God. Search me, oh God, and know my heart, that God, try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me, God. Lead me, Lord Jesus, in the way everlasting. Come on, somebody just begin to pray, Lord, cleanse my heart, Lord Jesus. Cleanse my heart, Lord Jesus. Lord, let the words of my mouth, Lord, let the meditations of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable unto you, Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody right now, in the name of Jesus, just begin to say it, Lord. God, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, that's it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it, in the name of Jesus. Let my words, let them lift up, God, not tear down. Lord, I pray it in the name of Jesus. Let us use it, Lord, for your glory. Let let us use it, Lord, for your kingdom. Let us use it, Lord Jesus, to lift you up and to magnify your holy name.
speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus
mention one more thing here. I want to pray for those or remind those that maybe you've been speaking words not to other people that have been negative and demeaning and demoralizing, but maybe there are words that you've been speaking to yourself that's been demeaning or demoralizing. I want to remind you tonight that God has put a new song on your lips. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody ought to be reminded that there is a purpose for you. There is a plan for you. That you are beautiful in the eyes of God. That you are created exactly how he wants you. That there is, come on, for every word that you have spoke to yourself that's been demeaning or demoralizing, that you've maybe been putting yourself down day after day, week after week, year after year, I want to encourage you tonight and let you know that God has put a new song of praise on your lips. There's a new vocabulary that I am loved by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. All across this house, would you stand and lift up a hand towards heaven? And would you pray this prayer that, God, I pray, let the words of my mouth, Lord, let the meditations of my heart, Lord, let them be acceptable unto you, Lord God. I pray, Lord, let me lift up. Lord, let me encourage. Lord, let me talk about the good things. Lord, let me think on things that are pure. Let me think on things that are joyful. Let me think on the good report, God. I pray it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody said, in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody said, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Would you one more time give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. That, Lord, we love you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn to somebody. Let them know that you're thankful for them, that it was good to see them in God's house if you're praying, keep on praying, but you're dismissed in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you in the name of the Lord.